Hello, I'm Kyle, and welcome back to Bedtime Verses with Kyle. Just a little poetry to help you get ready for bed. Please give me a follow up my YouTube at the Kyle Derek. And today is Flip to Friday. Let's see what we have. Let's go deep. The tragedy of Coriolanus. Oh, yes. I mean, we've done a piece from Coriolanus before. Wait, haven't I? Have we done other pieces? Oh, okay, look, I skipped to a good part here. If we've already done this, whatever. No one's watched all the videos. Who knows? Act 4, Scene 7. Coriolanus. Coriolanus has been kicked out of Rome. Uh, and he's joined... And uh, he's joined his greatest enemy, Alphidius. And now... Alphidius' lieutenant is saying, Oh, everyone thinks Coriolanus is... Coriolanus. Coriolanus is cooler than you. And Alphidius says... <clears throat> Okay, so they're getting uh, Coriolanus to sack Rome on behalf of the Volskis. Be though sure. Let's see if this way thinks it's not as parents of the Volga He bears all things fairly interesting. He's unfortunate. I strike an eye. As draw his sword, did he hath left undone that which shall break his neck or has it mine? Maybe. Sir, says the lieutenant, I beseech you, think you he'll carry Rome? All places yield to him ere he sits down. And the nobility of Rome are his. The senators and patricians love him too. The tribunes are no soldiers, and their people will be as rash in the repeal as hasty to expel him thence. I think he'll be to Rome, as is the osprey to the fish, who takes it by sovereignty of nature. First, he was a noble servant to them, but he could not carry his honors even. Whether it was pride, which out of daily fortune ever taints the happy man, whether defect of judgment to fail in the disposing of those chances which he was lord of, or whether nature not to be other than one thing, not moving from the cask to the cushion, but commanding peace, even with the same austerity and garb as he controlled the war, but one of these, as he hath spices of them all, not all, for I dare say so far free him, made him feared, so hated and so banished, but he has a merit to choke it in the utterance, so our virtues lie in the interpretation of the time, and power unto itself most commendable hath not a tomb so evident as a chair to extol what it hath done. One fire drives out one fire, one nail one nail, rights by rights falter, strengths by strengths do fail. Come, that's a way. When Caius Rome is thine, thou art poorest of all, then shortly art thou mine. Woo! This is actually a pretty good passage. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's saying people are fickle, everyone loves him, and it's like, uh, I mean, the best line is, the, the osprey takes the fish by nature, it's in him to dominate. And he has some, uh, so our virtues lie in the interpretation of the time. Isn't that true? Right? Certain uh, traits are preferred depending on what the world needs in a way. I mean, right now, is, or at least I, when I was growing up, you know, through the 60s and 70s. No, I wasn't there. Okay. But like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, like being uh, outspoken, like speaking your mind, taking no guff. That was the thing that everybody wanted. That was like the cool thing to do. And now it's quite different, actually. Now it's don't speak your mind. Or, you know, be cautious, very, very, very cautious of everybody's feelings to the point of self-censorship. Uh, so now there's a, there's a different game afoot. Although I think naturally... Every person wants to be able to speak freely. I think that's the best goal. Um, but uh, yes, by the turn of time, and power unto itself most commendable hath not a tomb so evident as a chair to extol what it hath done. That is, yeah, that is not a great line, actually, because it starts off so good in power. In the utterance, no, it the power unto itself most commendable hath not a tomb so evident, and then it's like, as a chair to extol, just to praise what it hath done. A chair to praise itself? I. The note says, uh, fall into oblivion unless it receives praise from the public. That's uh, it's pretty far-fetched. Yeah, so even sometimes Shakespeare misses the mark. Like, that was a good setup. But then he says, one fire drives out one fire, one nail, one nail. That's good. One fire drives out one fire, one nail, one nail. Rights by rights falter, strength Rights by rights, both the strengths by strengths do fail. Yeah, that's great. Cyclical. Cyclical. Uh, 
Anyway, thanks again for joining me for Bedtime Versus with Kyle. You can follow me here. Please subscribe to my YouTube, at the Kyle Derrick. Get the Blessed, the story of adventure written in poetry, which hasn't been done in a long time, actually, and not like this, probably a few hundred years. So that's something, isn't it? And there'll be new readings every weekday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>